The single biggest innovation in Canon's new 5D Mark IV is a feature called Dual Pixel RAW. Let's take a really close look at it. I've been working with it for the last few days, both in test environments and in the real world. The, the way Dual Pixel RAW works is each, each pixel has like a left side and a right side. So the camera is actually seeing the entire scene from a couple of slightly different angles. And when you have that extra data, when you enable this optional feature, then uh, you can do some cool things within a software. The, the most visually compelling is what, what Canon calls bokeh shift. And that in post allows you to very slightly shift the angle of your camera so that the background blur moves side to side a little bit. Now, in the demonstration that Justin is showing here, uh, the amount of shift you actually get is about half that because that video clip is going all the way from an extreme left shift to an extreme right shift. And of course, you always start dead center at zero. So you can get half that shift. It's it's not a lot of shift. And actually, I went through a lot of example pictures, and that was kind of the, the most dramatic of them. The other side of dual pixel raw is called image micro adjustment. That's a terrible name. But what this does is it actually allows you to move focus forward or back just very slightly. And this is, I think, Okay, you're looking at a video clip now, and it's moving at the same pace as the last clip that you saw, moving from one extreme of image micro adjustment to the other, shifting all the way from front focus to all the way to back focus. And you probably, it probably looks like a still image. It's not. That's, that's one extreme to another. That's actually twice as much image micro adjustment as you can get. And you probably couldn't see it because there's not. A, a lot of shift forward and back. So you can stop watching the video. I will just sum it up for you. <laughs> Image micro adjustment isn't going to be practical in real world usage. I imagined if I missed focus on a portrait, like sometimes the camera will focus on the forehead or the nose or focus a little bit back or in the far eye. I, I imagined I might be able to correct for that. And if that was the case, then it's, it would be a game changer. And I would be telling every portrait and wedding photographer to go out and buy this camera. Even for wildlife photography, that would be a huge thing because so many pictures just people move, you move your body forward and back with shallow depth of field, that can be enough. It, it doesn't solve that problem. And to sum up what I'm about to show you, I just turned dual pixel raw off after these tests and I'll never turn it back on because there's, there's no practical use for it that I could find. Let's take a look at some actual sample images. And now first, I'm, I'm jumping into Canon Digital Photo Professional here um, because no other software allows you to do these types of changes. And this is a big drawback because Digital Photo Professional is terrible. It's terrible software. And the fact that you have to leave Lightroom and go into this is, is a big deal and it's going to slow you down. So if you do enable it and you do want to make these adjustments, know that it's taking you out of your normal workflow. Adobe says that they will add support for, for dual pixel raw files to Lightroom, but the way I interpret that statement is that they will allow you to do normal Lightroom stuff with dual pixel raw photos. I do not expect that Adobe is going to add in the uh, image micro adjustment or bokeh shift features at all. So this is a portrait shot, and you know what? I'm actually going to pick the other example of a portrait shot here. I took portraits of just quick snapshots of Chelsea, one focused on the near eye and one focused on the far eye. And generally for a portrait, you'll focus on the near eye because as you look at this portrait, it looks a little weird to have it focused on the far eye. But this happens because sometimes models will just turn their head and you'll have the focusing point on the wrong eye. And in the course of a normal portrait shoot, you keep shooting and reshooting to fix that. To enable image micro adjustment, you'll select this checkbox up here. And then you can see there's a slider here to shift fo focus back or forward. So in this case, we'd want to shift it forward as much as possible. And there you have it. That that was the difference. So let's see the before and after. This is before and this is after. Now, if you look closely, you can see a few differences. Like look at the, the background blur here and look at some of the hairs along the side of her face here. Um, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't bring the near I anywhere in focus. And in fact, I, I really can't see any difference in sharpness there. You can crank up the strength slider here and I'll do that. Uh, my take is the way the software is working is it, it uses the dual pixel information to 
put together a bit of a depth map of the image, and then it selectively applies a little bit of sharpening or a little bit of blurring to different parts of the picture. I don't see any evidence that it's actually extracting more detail from the image. I never actually see additional detail come into focus, even though if I look really closely, I can see little bits of difference. This picture was taken with the Canon 7200 F2.8 uh, Mark II LIS at 200 millimeters in F2.8. So it's kind of a, a classic portrait. I wanted to set it up so that uh, I had as much as the shallowest depth of field I could to exaggerate the effects of this. Um, and you can see even in that exaggerated case, image micro adjustment didn't really make any difference at all. If you want to take a quick look at the bokeh shift on this, I'll, I'll select it. Note, you can only use one of these features at a time. So if I select bokeh shift, it turns off image micro adjustment. Um, if I slide it to the left, you can see the background changes there. If I slide it all the way to the right, you can see it, it changes again. So there are differences here, but not anything that I would consider useful, especially considering the fairly high cost of actually using dual pixel raw. I'll cover that in just a little bit. Let's take another look at a real world, world picture of this very serious athlete. Uh, she's playing some soccer and though the focusing system in the 5D Mark IV is good, it missed focus on the eye. I'll, I'll blame myself here. And you can see it's back focus a little bit because the athlete was moving extremely fast. She's really, really fast. So let's try to fix this by pulling the focusing forward. And there you have it. <laughs> that's before. And that's after. If you're looking at your screen like I don't see the difference. Nobody sees the difference there. It's just not. A significant difference. And I went through dozens of pictures trying to find you an example that would highlight the differences here. I even reached out to Canon and said, am I doing something wrong? I can see it's doing something, but it's not something anybody would be really interested in. Now, here on the bokeh shift, notice it's, it's always going horizontal in relation to the sensor. So because this was a vertical shot, if I use the bokeh shift here, you can see the, the background kind of shifts up or down. And you can see that the foreground here changes too. So that's that's cool. It just there's no part of me that thinks, oh, that's really meaningful to me. Uh, let's take another look at another picture that has some forward background blur, some forward blur, some front bokeh. <laughs> How about that? Uh, again, with the image micro adjustment, if I pull it forward and you look here, you can see a little bit of a difference. That's without the image micro adjustment and that's with it. You can see that the software is doing something, but you're not like, oh, that's in focus when it wasn't in focus. Like that never seems to be the case in any real world shot that I've made. If I shift it to the left here, you can see it's actually a really cool effect. You can see that it is working. Um, I just, I can't imagine a scenario where I would go through the trouble to do that. One other minor point about this, uh, if let's pull up this picture here and just crank the exposure up, this was taken in very low light. So it has an extreme amount of noise and let's raise the shadows up too. And now let's this Canon software is terrible. I have to go to tools, start dual pixel raw optimizer. Even though they have sliders, they didn't put these sliders in with their other sliders. You have to open up a separate dialog. The, the minute we turn on bokeh shift here, I'll turn that on and then shift it over to the left and watch how much noisier the image gets. That's without bokeh shift and that's with bokeh shift. So if you are planning to use it, don't try to mix it with high ISO stuff. It seems like maybe it's only pulling the image from like the left half of the pixels and therefore the amount of noise increases. Just an interesting caveat of it. Uh, let's go over the disadvantages of use it, using it. Now I'll also quickly cover that there's a, a ghosting effect um, feature in the dual pixel raw optimizer ghosting reduction. And if you get some sort of flaring in your image, this can actually reduce it. Um, but I just wasn't ever, ever able to create a sample image where it 
had a useful effect. And frankly, I never really I, I kind of like the effect of flaring. And when I don't like it, it's not a big deal to remove. So you can see it, it changes all images in a, a way, <laughs> which is generally unpleasant to have it turned on. I just didn't want to leave that uncovered. To, to discuss the disadvantages of using it, as I mentioned, you you will probably be able to edit dual pixel raw files in Lightroom, but you'll only be able to do traditional Lightroom things. You probably will not be able to do the image micro adjustment or the bokeh shift. You'll have to go into Canon digital, digital professional software, which is terrible. The file size is twice as big. And that means that you're going to get all the disadvantages of the big file size of the Canon 5DSR. They're actually, the raw files are bigger than the 50 megapixel 5DSR files. It means that Lightroom is going to be much slower. It means your memory card is going to fill up faster. It means your buffer is going to be even smaller than it normally is. There are a lot of disadvantages. The frames per second will drop from seven frames a second down to five frames a second. Coincidentally, the same frames per second that the 5DSR has. So suddenly, um, You've given up most of the benefits of the 5D Mark IV over the 5DSR, and you're still working with lower megapixel files. Uh, and if you if you use digital uh, dual pixel raw in live view, you can't do continuous shooting anymore. You can only do single shooting. So there's there's kind of a lot of overhead to enabling it. And to me, I couldn't come up with any real world scenario where I would ever want to have it turned on. And you have to turn it on proactively. Like you have to be doing this for every one of your files just in case you might ever use it. So for me, I am permanently turning off dual pixel raw. And that's that. If you had pre-ordered the camera because you thought this might be a game changer for you, I would definitely reconsider that. I, It's not going to shift us. This feature alone isn't going to make us not want to use the 5DSR anymore. I hope that helped. If you have any questions, write a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you. Subscribe, share, like. Thank you. Bye.